Hey there! Today I'm going to talk about a pen which came in a pink box. Not sure how well you can see that, but it's pink. I'm not a huge fan of pink, but I thought it was a, an interesting box. Fairly simple. When you open it up, out comes this pen, which is actually held in there by a rubber band, which is not particularly strong. This pen is from China, and I'll refer to it as the Chinese Leatherette pen, uh, because I couldn't find a brand name, and it is covered with a type of blue leatherette. It's very dark blue, perhaps almost indigo or something. Um, I love it, and I love it for a number of reasons. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. Okay, so let's start with the cap. The cap is a very nice metal thing on there. You see that? It's like a little button. Um, I'd almost say like a button filler button, but it's it's on the cap, so it wouldn't make sense. Uh, I, 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 I like that. I think it's a nice design. Maybe it's a screw in there or something, but I, I actually well, I enjoy it. We have the cap. It's a little black, just plastic there. And then you get the leatherette covering. Then you get this ring, then an, another black ring, and then you get more leatherette covering, and then some metal rings and black plastic again, which I think makes for a fairly balanced overall look. So this looks fairly distinguished, I think. Okay, then we have the clip. On the clip are no less than four leaves, I guess. Pairs of leaves or something. And then on this metal ring, there are more leaves. I can't show you that very well with this camera, but I'll, I'll try to do a close-up in the writing sample. The clip is pretty tight, but it works well. And uh, you got this leatherette. Now this leatherette, is a, it's, it looks like... Um, you know those those pictures you see of, 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 of not really deserts, but you got this this the earth, and it's really it's been really hot, and then it cracks open. Well, that's what it looks like. Uh, again, I, I can't really show you that very well here, but you may see a little bit if I if I turn the pen around, you see that the light changes, and it's the leatherette is almost black, but these cracks are a very deep, dark, rich blue, which I'm sure a camera will not pick up, but it's very nice. I really love that. Okay, so you have this ring of leaves, then you have a plastic black ring around that. The barrel is nicely tapered, uh, and it, it also has that leather covering. Then, as I said, this, this plastic, it's not really a blind cap, but an end cap, and then two metal rings, which do not seem to be painted on there. I think they're really metal rings. Okay, now, one of the funny things about this pen is trying to unscrew it, because this takes a lot of time. They added a lot of threads. Now it's open. Um, nothing wrong with that, just thought it was interesting. The grip section. I love it. I really... It, it's it's amazing. You have this... It's, it's nicely tapered up to this point, and then it gets broader again. What you cannot see is that there are very fine waves like that, etched into there, into that, uh, etched into the section, and um, all over the section. So that makes for a very nice thing to hold. It doesn't slip. And you get this this part here where it, it, it sort of, um, it, it gets a bit broader, you have another nice metal ring on there, and then you have a very nice two-tone nib. I think I paid about thirteen dollars or something for this so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it, it says Iridium Point which is not always a good sign uh, and it says 18 kgp it's 18 karat gold plated well I'm sure it's not a, well whatever in any case sure it's gold plated whatever I don't really care what I do care about is the nib what does it write well how does it write well it writes well um, I found that when I use this pen with the amount of pressure I tend to use normally, it's a bit dry and it tends to skip. When I add a bit more pressure than it would usually do, the pen writes just fine. I'll show you that in the writing sample. In any case, so you have the nib, then you have the feet, nothing special, it's just completely flat. It, it has a little bit of a shape, but there are no ribs in there or anything. 
Um, but it, it looks kind of cool. Now, you have a lot of threads. But the good thing is they're not that sharp. So when you hold the pen, you're not actually cutting into your skin, which I always hate. Unscrew the section, out comes the converter. It came with this converter, which looks actually pretty cool, I think, um, because it has a see-through uh, sort of, well, piston housing, twisting knob, whatever you like to call it. It's, it's a bit of both, I guess. You can completely disassemble that. So you can unscrew this metal part, and then you just take it off, you take the, the piston out, etc. Um, so that's, I think, pretty cool, and uh, of course that really aids in cleaning. Um, by the way, the whole pen you can disassemble, you can, well, the whole pen, I mean, you can take out the nib and the feet, just pull them out, friction fit, and you can, you can clean out, flush out the section, the nib, etc. So very nice. Okay, it's a decent size too. And when posted, it turns pretty big. Um, I like it. Okay, now, interestingly enough, I think the uh, leatherette covering is actually applied to a metal body, and that makes this a heavy pen. Uh, altogether, cap included, so which is the, the weight you would experience when, it, when it's posted, it weighs 60 grams. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. It's very heavy. Uh, I think my inked up Mont Blanc 149 uh, weighs 50 grams, so this actually weighs more than that, which is heavy. Of course, this one's made of metal, and the Mont Blanc is not, but still, heavy pen. If you like that, as I do, it's pretty cool. So that's something about it I like. I like the nib. The nib is somewhat springy, giving you a nice line variation for this price. I think that's pretty impressive. What do I not like about it? Well, the grip section is brilliant, the nib is brilliant, I like the looks but it is a heavy pen. I just said I like that, and I do, but when you post it, the cap alone, I think, weighs about 25 grams, which is more than some pens weigh. So if you post it, it tends to get a little top heavy. And I don't mind it that much, but for extended writing, I don't post it. Then again, it's big enough. I dropped the cap. Well, anyway, um, it's, it's big enough to use it, and um, it's not an issue. So, I like it. Um, get it now. I got this from eBay. If you search Chinese leather red pen, I think this is what you'll find. And um, that's all there's to it. So, I hope this was useful. And uh, we'll do a writing sample next. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with this Chinese leather red covered pen. What I can show you a bit better here is this ring with the leaves on it. I think that's a nice design. It's nothing too flashy, but it's it's nice. And then you also get these leaves on the clip, which I think is nice. Okay. Takes a lot of unscrewing to open up this pen. But once you have it, it's pretty nice. Okay. So we have, I'll call it the leatherette. A very smooth nib. I didn't have to do any additional smoothing on this, it just rolled straight out of the box, which I really like. The nib uh, is, I think, something in between fine and medium, but for Asian terms, I would definitely say this is medium. It's not as fine as, as some are. Uh, and um, uh, the ink, uh, if I am not mistaken, I put in some uh, Visconti sepia. Not exactly sure, but I think that's what it was. Okay, let's do some writing. Now, what I'll do here is apply no pressure. This is how I would usually write, but as you can see, it does not really work out with this pen. It, it tends to skip a little and the ink gets, the, the line you draw gets so fine that it seems like it's skipping. Uh, and, and that's not very good. Now if you apply just a bit more pressure, that effect completely disappears. So with this pen I'd need to push down onto the paper a bit harder than I usually would. Fox Fox. <laughs> Funny. Anyway, um, so yeah. I thought that was interesting. I've, I've not seen a lot of pens that require such pressure, although I did remember that with my 
uh, Wallety 78 JT, I had the same problem. Is it a real problem? I'm not sure. This was some fast writing, as you see, there was no skipping now, but if I were to do that with no pressure, then you can see that after a few words you really uh, get skipping issues. So, if you're willing to put some more pressure on your pen, then this is, I think, a very nice pen. Okay, let's do, let's check out the uh, line variation. Well, that seems to be very present to me. Get some nice shading here. You definitely get some line variation. Looks pretty cool. If we do some coloring, then you can see that the nib lays down a relatively fine, but still very even patch of ink. And I think that's a good sign. So I'm, I'm enjoying this. I like, I like the way the pan handles. And with a bit more pressure, this works fine too. This is probably going to make a lot of noise in the camera microphone, but it, it really is pretty smooth. So there you have it. A very interesting pen at this price level. I think this is hard to beat. It looks pretty distinguished. Uh, it's pleasant to use, very nice grip section, lovely two-tone nib. Uh, seriously, you need to get this. If, if you're looking for a, a, a not-too-expensive pen, uh, I think this makes a very nice option. However, make sure you like heavier pens, because it is not a lightweight. So if you're looking for a light pen, I would skip by. Skip by. Uh, I would skip this pen. Okay, so, I hope that was useful. And I thank you, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.